an exciting day for sports here in Quincy. We could have five or six lead stories, but unfortunately that's not possible. So let's start off our highlight parade out at Quincy High School where the Blue Devils were hosting the Illinois Class 3A Wrestling Regionals. Let's go to the 150 pound class. This is Quincy's Eli Roberts and he's battling Antoine Phillips of Alton in the championship match. Roberts wins by a seven to one decision. That gives the Blue Devils their first championship of the day. At 165 pounds, Owen Uppinghouse was again the talk of the tournament. He hoped to extend his unbeaten record. He won two matches before this one, but in falls the first just in 51 seconds. Here against Brendan Lado of Edwardsville, Uppinghouse used his lightning quickness to get on the edge, and he'd win in a fall. Uppinghouse is now 84-0 on the season. He finished third in state last year and is now one step closer to going back to the big house. Quincy High got one more championship. This was at 175 pounds. Brian Newbold battled Max Miller of Edwardsville. Newbold wins it 7-1 and improves to 41-5 on the year. Edward, Edwardsville wins the team championship with Quincy High taking second out of eight teams in the field. Next Friday night, the Devils host the sectionals down in Blue Devil Gym. For on the basketball side of things, and now 24 and 2 Blue Devils took down East St. Louis this afternoon, 65 to 51. Keyshawn Thomas led the team with 27 points and had 20 rebounds. Sticking with QHS, the 22 and 5 Lady Blue Devils hosted a huge Western Big Six game this afternoon against United Township. And with three games left on their schedule, this was an important matchup. It was a slow start, though, for QHS, which isn't like them, but they were going up against a really good team. Taylor Foey led the team with 11 points today. There she was hitting a little jumper. And here's a little Taylor Foey and Jada Brown combo for your Saturday night. Those two are so much fun to watch. In the second half, QHS was still trying to find their bearings. Layla Day dishes it out to Jada Brown, who's wide open in the paint. She snags the easy bucket. More from the Blue Devils, Taylor Foey back in the spotlight. She fights to keep her, keep her team in this game. But at the end of the day, Quincy High wasn't able to bounce back. They fall to United Township 41-22 and are now 22-6 on the season. Today was the last day for the shootout at QND. And like I've said before, I love when two teams that don't typically play each other face off. And we got that tonight. Central Southeastern versus Palmyra. Both teams are coming off Friday night wins. So quick turnaround for both squads. Late in the first, though, here Palmyra trails by seven. And watch this move from Claire Williams. The steal and the bucket, taking it down low to make it a five-point game. Central Southeastern started heating up, though, in the second quarter. Here's Carly Peters driving down low and battling for that hard-earned bucket for two. Coming out of the half, Palmyra trailed by 17 points. And I don't know what head coach Kelsey Stewart told her girls at halftime, but it worked. Palmyra was dropping shot after shot. The first two from Cindy Compton, followed by a shot from Kendra King, and another shot from Compton, but this time from behind the arc. At one point, it was a 17-point deficit. Palmyra brought it down to eight, but Central Southeastern eventually woke up. No matter where you are, it's always Miller time. Lauren Miller, she's going to hit a little Euro step to the rack. Once CSC got going, it was hard to stop them. They'll go on to defeat Palmyra 52-37. to Q and D Lady Raiders, they're also taking on Oakville tonight. The defending state champions before the game, though, they honored Sage Stratton, who topped the 1,000 point mark a few days ago. At first, it was a Jenna Durst kind of night early on. Here she is driving down the lane. The Raiders got going early. Here she hits the, the a few plays later, she's going to hit the three from the top of the key. Durst scored Q and D's first seven, but Oakville bounced back with a 12 2 streak. Here came the Lady Raiders. Ari Bueller goes all the way, and Q and D scored 15 straight points. Here they push the ball. It's Bueller to Durst and into the paint for the bucket. Then Notre Dame decides to pound it on the, on the inside. It's Durst to Tristan Peeper. QND held the lead going into the half. Third quarter action. They stayed with a winning formula. Peeper scores down low, and QND built a 14 point lead. When it's all said and done, QND is going to top Oakville 52 to 25. The Lady Raiders will improve to 24 and 4 on the season. Another late game tonight. It was the QND boys hosting the fourth ranked West Central. And this came down to the wire. Here's Jace Allensworth with the steal. He takes it all the way. QND trying to come back. Skip ahead to the fourth quarter. It's Noah Lunt to Jace Allensworth. But West Central didn't panic. They just gave the ball to their star, Zach Evans. He cuts down the lane and takes it to the hole to keep the Cougars on top. The Raiders weren't done off the impounds. Bo F. Tink, he's going to get the ball a few plays later and drain the three. Raiders down 52 to 46 with 2.15 to, the, to go. This one going down to the wire. Jace Allensworth again. Raiders down just 51 to, 40, 51 to 54. And down to the last 10 seconds. QND with a chance to tie, but Bo F. Tink just off 
and West Central escapes the pit with a 59 to 54 win. In the La Plata tournament, Canton captured first place by defeating La Plata 53 to 38. And on our last stop tonight for this busy night at Pepsi Arena, the Hawks welcome William Jewel College to the floor. QU is trying to stop their two game losing streak and today was a close one. Neck and neck from start to finish, but you know Zion Richardson, he's gonna ball. He put up 15 points tonight. Nate Shockey followed with 14, but at the end of the day, QU wouldn't be able to get it done. They lose in double overtime, 74 to 72. It was